thank you and Rebecca and the whole team at Asia CEO for putting together really what I think are some really useful virtual events. And a special call out to all of the participants today. You know, I think as human resource leaders, you're probably the most critical to successfully weathering, you know, this very challenging time. And, you know, I'm, I'm physically in the U.S. right now, but I continue to be with you in spirit. And I pledge my support in whatever small way that I can towards your tremendous efforts in continuing the success of the Philippines and the larger region as, as a world-class provider of customer experience solutions. And so I wanted to spend just a few minutes uh, today talking to you on the future of work. And, and I think your role in that, as I said, I think human resource leaders are really critical. And given my background and experience in not only managing firms in the business process outsourcing space, um, but as, as well as being a client of, uh, of companies that operate in that, uh, in that, in that BPO uh, arena. Now, I know it's been said ad nauseum, but I wanted to reinforce how important it is to call out that really other than 9-11, you know, which absolutely had a global impact on travel and, and required many new approaches for business operations, COVID-19 is just in a class all by itself. And it's a, it's a dilemma which has had a universal impact across industries, geographies, employees, and customers. And there's literally no individual or business in this world, which has been unaffected. You know, so we are globally and universally challenged as humans with the resulting impacts that have driven a fairly rapid and substantial change of behaviors in customers, in business leaders, and in employees. And most of these were unplanned and maybe even unintended. Now it's been roughly 10 months and I think we're all still working through you know, what this means to the future of our families, our jobs, and our business, because these behaviors are still in flux. And it's probably going to be another two, maybe three, four, five years um, before there's some change in, uh, uh, in that uh, or you know, more stability. So for this reason, you know, I'm, I'm just not convinced that we're at a point where you can lock in any particular strategy other than it seems pretty clear to me that retreating to the traditional approaches of how we work, and I'm really referring to you know, how we work in a physical environment, whether that's a retail store, a hospital, a restaurant, an entertainment venue, a contact center, you know, what have you. So much of those traditional approaches of how we work may not work anymore. And in some cases, they may not even be allowed, you know, given safety and, and, and health uh, restrictions. So I do speak frequently with leaders across my network, across the globe, and I can say with certainty that every company operating in the customer experience space is grappling with how to move forward in this new reality. So here's the challenge to you all. I think there's a level of innovation now required where I believe you as HR professionals managing the tremendous people assets we have in the Philippines are uniquely positioned to help navigate, this, navigate us through this. And the Philippines needs to take advantage of this situation by leading innovation in technology and HR processes that are required in this new reality, which I will be quite provocative by saying this, rather than trying to retrofit our way of working, I think we need to pivot away from being the call center capital of the world. I think we need to blow up that traditional brick and mortar on-premise workforce approach and reimagine our leadership position as being the best talent source of world-class customer experience professionals. So I challenge you to think about four main areas to work on. And so number one, the physical service delivery environment can no longer be limited to just a collection of brick and mortar call center offices in what I've often called the chicken coop configuration. So I would say it in this way, we need to completely repackage our pitch. The tremendous people assets that we have all over the country, they're not just in tier one and tier two metros. 
Uh, we're not limited, like many other countries, to only provide services from a limited set of physical places. We have the infrastructure to support employees that work from anywhere now, even Filipino talent that is resident outside of the Philippines. But look, we've been operating for many years physically exporting talent to foreign companies in foreign lands, including the contact center industry. Just with the contact center industry, it's all been done virtually. So there are now many, many more opportunities open if we expand this methodology and the pool of available talent, regardless of where they physically live, rather than tethering to a physical brick and mortar location, such as a contact center. And to do this, you need infrastructure to people's homes. A PLDT and Globe have made significant investments in the fiber optic network that fuels the backhaul of all the residential wired and wireless broadband connections. But we are behind in putting the capacity in place to support the increased demand within those local barangays. And this is where we need to focus. We have the assets, but we still need to push hard for government and private investment in the last mile. That last mile residential infrastructure is going to enable your people assets. Now, to be clear, though, I don't think we're significantly lagging here. I think this is a, a problem that, it, that is, exists all over the world. And it's something that can be accomplished quite quickly with many of the new hybrid telecommunication technologies. And the world of 5G really changes everything. So my final comment just on the physical environment is enabling accelerating work from anywhere has a new strategic advantage for the Philippines. And I would say and challenge, I think the government's advocacy and selling of the Philippines, as well as things like the CREATE bill and, and on the other government incentives that are available now, they're still way too focused on marketing our capital assets in physical spaces. I think that needs to change. Part of our traditional approach has been selling the benefits of beautiful next generation contact center facilities, supporting young energetic workers with Silicon Valley-like amenities. And I certainly have been one that has also been promoting that. But remember the incentives that are in place today, you know, through organizations like PESA, they were created for manufacturing and R&D. That's almost exclusively done in brick and mortar facilities with on-premise human labor for import export. The incentive laws are misaligned. They govern work that is in physical economic zones. So we absolutely need new incentives which motivate those investments and in companies to hire a different type of worker and doing a different type of work in a different physical configuration. It doesn't at all look like the traditional manufacturing floor or what we call the production floor of a contact center. The so second thing I want you to, to consider is the rapid, and I mean rapid, deployment of automation, AI, and virtual assistant technology. Now, we are still very behind here. And COVID-19, I think, arguably, has really uh, exasperated, the, maybe even put us farther behind. I don't think we were prepared at all. And so we scrambled to kind of retrofit our organizations without really the helping hand that automation and AI provides. So, you know, don't get uneasy when I, you know, when, when I say this, we have to embrace the use, the use of these tools rapidly. There will be some job loss, it's inevitable. It comes from replacing very tedious manual process workers. However, this is absolutely an area where the Philippines can thrive by supercharging our people assets with new support tools and even new skills. I think, I think this is really, really important to, you know, to understand, em embracing this is a, is a critical element of our success. And for example, you know, virtual assistant technology works really well when the sales or service options are thoughtful, well-designed, appropriate, and most importantly, drive resolution. If it doesn't drive resolution or creates more customer effort, it becomes very frustrating and stale. So what happens is when, you, when it's deployed in isolation, it's in not part of a larger strategy, which includes live employees, it doesn't really work that well. So don't discount the magic that can happen in a live interaction. 
an ability for a well-trained and experienced customer uh, experience professional to create the emotional and human connection with the customer. And specifically for the Philippines, with our innate service culture, this is our secret weapon. We need to continue to develop and market enhanced by automation and AI that low effort, delightful customer experience that only we can, we can provide. Number three is evolving our compensation of benefit approaches. I've had some pretty heated debates over my career. What is number one? What is the number one driver of employee satisfaction? It's never money, but the culture, training, support, and the rewards are important. And a virtual working environment now adds a completely new complication. Motivation needs to come from a whole new set of monetary and non-monetary benefits that are tuned to a world where you may never physically meet your team. Healthcare, pharmaceuticals, mental health support, microloans, retirement savings plans, et cetera. These all are to totally new prioritization uh, in, in the minds of even some of the youngest employees um, that, we, that we have and their families. So a total rewards approach, gamification, performance-based pay, choose your own benefits, et cetera, are all really exciting places where the Philippines can again be a real leader in this new, this new world. And lastly, number four to consider is talent acquisition. In a world where management and frontline employees may never physically meet, you have to be able to do skill and capability assessments. There's a cultural fit assessment. But I would say now, even more than before, it comes down to trust, mutual trust. And so I would say that there's no particular reason why we can't do all of these things virtually with the tools we have today. And it's actually something that we're pretty advanced. We do already uh, and we lead globally. It just needs to be tuned again to this new future. So none of this is an easy task. I, I'm not trying to suggest that, that, uh, that have all the answers or that this is, this is a simple thing to accomplish. But I do think that the Philippines were really uniquely positioned to be stronger and even more successful if we take this opportunity to really truly, truly innovate. We have to move to a future way of working that is focused on sourcing, training, and supporting the best employees wherever they may be in the world. And that sounds very much in line with what I think HR leaders are supposed to be doing anyway. So with Filipino innovation, and a world leading service culture, I feel really strongly that you'll lead us into a successful future. So hopefully that helps a little bit and is provocative and gives you some things to think about. But again, thank you so much for, for the opportunity to, to speak with you today. And um, I hope you really enjoy the rest of the event.